Amber. Imagine you're living in the 1960s and human rights are far from equal. Many people at this point in time are stepping up and speaking their minds, they're fighting for their rights, and they're banding together to be heard. Not only are minorities struggling with inequality, but women are struggling to be heard as well. Today I'm gonna to tell you about an amazing woman that, has, that was an elected tribal leader in the 60s and 70s, and is well known as an American Indian rights activist. This is Ramona Bennett. She's currently a Puyallup tribal elder and lives in the Tacoma area. Ramona is best known for the Puyallup, for the Puyallup fishing camp and the eviction of the state of Washington out of the Cascadia Hospital that used to be located where the Emerald Queen Casino now stands. Ramona was nominated to be a tribal council leader without ever even running for the position. The Puyallup membership was well aware of her involvement with women's and minority rights up in Seattle and little did she know at the time that she was elected the challenges that were just around the corner. Today I'm going to tell you three things about Ramona. I'll first share with you her courage, followed by her intelligence, and finally I'll share with you her powerful message. Before I do that, I would like to let you know the three past speeches of Ramona's that I enjoyed reviewing. First, I listened to a speech on the University of Washington's website. Then I watched a speech that was done at an American Indian Movement rally, and that speech took place at Tacoma Federal Building's front door. The last speech I watched was a recent speech that took place in Seattle for, for a rally titled Idle No More. And the references that I used are the Seattle Times, the Piala Tribal Newspaper, and the Tacoma News Tribune. So first I'm going to talk about Ramona's courage. After being elected as the chairwoman of the Puyallup tribe, she was faced with some serious challenges. Local fishermen and women were being chased off the riverbanks and the federal government was not allowing native people to fulfill their fishing rights. The men continued to set their nets and when they would return to shore, they'd get drug out of their boats, billy clubbed and handcuffed before being drug off to jail and having their nets and their boats confiscated. Now back in this era, fishing was one of the few ways that, Nat that a Native American man or woman could provide for their family. Without being able to catch and sell the salmon, families would go hungry and could eventually become homeless. This was all illegal on law enforcement's behalf. Net fishing in allotted areas is a treaty right that was agreed upon in 1856 under the Medicine Creek Treaty in the Puyallup, in the Puyallup area. The native people in the local areas began to push back. Ramona Bennett helped to organize fishing camps along the local riverbanks, one of them right here on the Puyallup River not far from Portland Avenue. Men, women, and children had been encamped along the river all summer, sometimes as many as 300 strong, watching over fishermen working on the river and documenting the arrests on camera and then soon bailing them out of jail. On the morning of September 9, 1970, although they had no jurisdiction on the Puyallup's land, on the riverbank, the local chief of police arrived with a bullhorn and plenty of backup. They ordered approximately 80 men, women, and children in the camp to disperse. The Indians refused to leave. Both sides were armed, and as police stormed the camp, the shots were fired. Billy clubs flay, uh, the clubs flailed, and tribal members were thrown to the ground. Others ran, fearing for their lives. These are some quotes of Ramona's. They were all up on the Highway 99 bridge with rifles, and we could see their rifles kicking, and you could feel the bullets going by. There's nowhere you can go. I thought I was shot dead. Somebody pointed a gun at me and pulled the trigger, but it was a gas canister, tear gas, of course. I remember walking through the camp, and I was so scared my legs were stiff. It was that Frankenstein walk you do when you're so absolutely terrified. We can kind of feel that way as <laughs> up here. You know. Bennett was arrested with the others, including some non-Indian people. While she was incarcerated, she was looking at 35 years in federal prison. All charges against the demonstrators ultimately were dropped. Eventually, the historic Bolt decision of 1974 was handed down which held that treaties signed with native tribes and the federal government in the 1850s entitled the tribe to 50% of the total fish harvest. So currently now, if you drive down River Road or even out in Chambers Creek area, during the right season, 
you can catch a glimpse of the Puyallup fishermen on that river net fishing. Some people like to stop by and pick up the salmon. It helps, it helps put money in the family's pockets. So the next thing I'm going to tell you about is Ramona's intelligence. In 1972, she co-founded the local Indian Child Welfare Act Committee. Through the committee, she developed a model for childhood and family service in Washington State that she used to help her co-author and secure a National Indian Child Welfare Act in 1978. In the 1980s, she served as an administrator for the Wahilu Indian School in Olympia before going on to found Rainbow Youth and Family Services, which is a local adoption and foster care agency that she recently closed down for retirement after running it for 20 plus years. Ramona holds a Bachelor's of Art degree from Evergreen State College, a Master's in Education from the University of Puget Sound, and she also received an honorary doctorate of public affairs from UPS in 2000. She's done many inter interviews for articles, has been published in numerous books, and was placed in the list, of a top, the list of the top 100 most indigenous people worldwide. Ramona worked hard to ensure that our tribe was self-sufficient and had access to healthcare, schooling, and treatment. So the last thing that I'm gonna share with you is Ramona's powerful message. She was recently the keynote speaker at the Idle No More rally downtown Seattle. And this is a message that she shared with the younger generation. It's Keep it up. Woo! Keep shouting. Keep fighting. If all you have is your body, put it there. Your ancestors did. They fought for every right you enjoy. Uh, your freedom of religion, property, the resources. And you know what? Your great, great, great grandchildren will do the same thing. And that's how we are. That's why we're here. All my relations. actually access that on YouTube under Idle No More and see the full speech. <laughs> so I've now told you about Ramona's courage, her intelligence, and I've shared a piece of her powerful message. I have just one more thing to say about Ms. Ms. Ramona Bennett. She's my grandmother and I'm proud to be her close friend and relative. I get to see her every single day. I just came from her house on the way here. She's a wonderful person, and I'm, I'm glad to be able to present information about her to you guys. Whoa.